Hey guys, welcome to Wednesday in the Word. Last week, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving, a great time with friends and family, and reconnected and uh, just strengthened and renewed uh, relationships. Because <clears throat> as you get older, you begin to understand life is about relationships and stories. Relationships and stories. And uh, we're going to be in Psalms 101. 101 today as we're looking into the word today and uh, this is a psalm of David and he is really striving to be clear about whose side he's on you know I, I enjoy reading about the uh, Civil War the, the different stuff you know just the strategies all the different things the different things that took place and you hear about the guy who he wore blue pants and a gray coat both sides shot him at some point, you got to figure out what side you're on. I also, I, I, I remember one older lady who was uh, attending church and her uh, eyesight had failed and her hearing had really failed. And somebody said to her, why do you still go to church? You can't really hear, you can't see. I mean, and she said, I want them to know whose side I'm on. I thought, what a... Uh, what an awesome uh, testify, testimony of, I want them to know who said, and also beyond, beyond even being able to see or hear, there is the presence of God that saturates you beyond your hearing or your seeing, being in the presence of godly people. And so David begins Psalms 101, and he, he says, uh, I will sing of your love and justice to you, Lord, I will sing praise. So he starts off with worship for his God. That's a baseline. That is an awesome place to start. And then he says, in verse 2, says, I will be careful to lead a blameless life. Huh. I will be careful to live a blameless life. He says, I'm going to do the things that will bring me closer to you um, and free from wrongdoing. He goes on and says, uh, when will you come to me? He says, I will co conduct the affairs of my house with a blameless heart. He says, I I'm going to do my best to live pure and holy before you. Did he always achieve that? No. He had a couple times when he stumbled. But his heart was to have a pure relationship with God. In fact, in, in Psalms 51, it talks about uh, when he had sinned and he was uh, repentant. He says, against you alone have I sinned. He had sinned. He had damaged other people, but he understood uh, how sin damages that relationship. So he says, I'm going to do my best to live an upright life. And so here's, here's how he's going to do it. He says, uh, verse 3, I will not look with approval on anything that is vile. So he begins to set out the standards. He says, I'm going to be careful what I look at. Be careful what I, be careful little eyes, what you see, those images planted in your head to be careful of that and then he goes on he goes i hate what faithless people do i will have no part in it the perverse of heart shall be far from me i will have nothing to do with what is evil he said i am drawing a line in the sand this is the road i am going down i am going down godly upright doing the right thing and I am not going to even hang out with people who are sinful. I'm not going to hang out with those people who are going down a different road. I'm not going to put my stamp of approval on anything that they do. I, I hate the sin. You know, it's interesting uh, in our world today, you don't hear very many people talk about that, hating sin, saying, you know what, that is wrong. I hate that. Drug, alcohol, all the different stuff. You know what helps you to hate sin? When you begin to see the end results of addiction and sin. When you see the children whose homes are destroyed. When you see the bodies that are broken and the marriages that are destroyed because of sin. You begin to hate it. And when it comes into your family and when it impacts your children and your grandchildren, you begin to hate 
sin. You begin to hate what it does. And so it says, I, I hate what faithless people do. I will have no part in it. The perverse of heart shall be far from me. I don't even want to be around them. I will have nothing to do with what is evil. I don't want to be close to it. I don't, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put a wall up that will guard my heart, my mind, and to keep me from going down the wrong path. He goes, whoever slanders their neighbor in secret, I will put to silence. He's like, when people are bad-mouthing the neighbors and their friends around them, I'm not going to listen to them. I'm not going to listen to gossip and slander. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear bad things about other people. Wow. He says, I, whoever slanders their neighbor in secret, I will put to silence. Whoever has haughty eyes and a proud heart, I will not tolerate. He says, my eyes will be on the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me. The one whose walk is blameless will minister to me. He's saying, I'm picking my friends. I'm going to pick out the people who, who are faithful whose walk is blameless. I'm going to surround myself with those people because they will help be a strength and a source of encouragement to me. They will not lead me down the wrong road, but they appoint me in paths of righteousness. And, so, and that's the key. The people around you are going to influence you. They're going to impact everything you say and do. Have you, have you had any friends who moved south, like to Georgia? And when they come back to visit, they talk different, y'all. Well, y'all, you know. Or maybe they move to Canada, eh? Yeah. The people around you impact you. They're going to impact how you dress, how you look, how you talk, and how you live. Godly people. He says, uh, no one who practices deceit will dwell in my house. No one who speaks falsely will stand in my presence. As the king, he said, every morning I will put to silence all the wicked in the land. I will cut off every evildoer from the city of the Lord. you got to figure out what team you're on. And then live and support that team. Will you choose to be a follower of Jesus, a follower of morality and righteousness and right living? Or will you try to keep one foot in the world? So uh, I encourage you today, look around you and say, who are those godly people that I can hang with, become, and, and honestly, there is a, uh, there is the, as the church, we are here to help people have a God encounter, a Jesus um, interaction that changes their life, but we are also here to build a community, a faith community to help and encourage one another. So I encourage you to go be a part. You know, some of you watch online, and I get it, you're watching today online, but you're doing Sunday online too, and uh, I would just say, think of that lady who couldn't see or hear very well, but she wanted to be in church. So they'd know whose side she was on, and to be in the presence of God. So I encourage you to be in church this Sunday, and uh, allow God to do what only he can do. Hey, thanks for being a part of Wednesday in the Word.